Hello, everybody. Hey, I want to welcome you uh, to this new little uh, series I'm putting together uh, for uh, surface to air missiles. In particular, I'm focusing on the detection, recognition, and evasion of those missiles, uh, not so much on the um, attack of those systems. That's a whole different topic uh, re related to both the suppression of enemy air defenses and destruction of enemy air defenses types of missions. Um, and we're going to first uh, focus here today on an SA-2 uh, known as the SA-2 guideline United system. And before I move on, I did want to throw a little disclaimer out there that this content is really for the use of any uh, digital combat simulation users or even Falcon BMS. I think this is appropriate for them, too. Um, I'm also not an expert, okay? Um, I'm just a flight simulator enthusiast and uh, trying to help myself learn a lot of these SAM systems better. And uh, hopefully by me putting these videos together, um, I can share uh, with you all as well so we can kind of learn together. Um, additionally... Um, a lot of my resources come from available documentation and um, unclassified information that's available online, including DCS manuals, uh, resources from Tactical DCS, they're an online group that I fly with sometimes, and also Wikipedia. Um, and I'm sure I'm not going to get everything right. And if you do want uh, some clarifying questions or you have better suggestions, hey, throw those in the comments, man. Uh, let us all learn from your experience as well. Okay, so let's uh, move on here. All right, let's jump into the actual SA-2 site now. Um, so it is a static site, meaning you probably should know exactly where these uh, sites are if you have good intel. They're not going to be moving around a lot, right? <laughs> uh, additionally, it's supported by multiple assets, including uh, the Fansong tracking radar here in the middle. We have the P-19 or the flat face radar here to the to the bottom right and of course we have the uh, multiple uh, S-75 and SA-75 Davina missiles and their uh, associated launchers and the SA-2 site is supported by six launchers uh, and lastly of course uh, there are a number of support vehicles uh, to help with logistics um, you know utility trucks and uh, refueling trucks uh, for the site. So the SA-2 site, uh, of course, again, we have the missile, the S-75, SA-75 Divina. Um, the guidance it uses is called Radio Control Command Guidance. Um, it is a medium-range missile uh, that has 45 kilometers or 28 miles in maximum range uh, and a uh, maximum altitude of 82,000 feet or 25,000 meters. Uh, and the missile itself can reach uh, 3.5 Mach. Uh, and it does uh, have a boost of about 25 seconds. That uh, first five seconds is an accelerated boost, and then we have sustained boost for the following 20, uh, 20 seconds. Uh, so it uh, has a lot of fuel uh, to burn um, to reach up to that speed. All right, let's jump, jump into the Fansong radar itself here. Uh, its primary role is target acquisition and middle missile guidance. Uh, it can only track one target. However, it can provide guidance to three separate missiles towards that target at one time. And if you are on a strike package and, um, and this SA-2 site is your primary target, um, this Fansong radar should be your primary. Uh, meaning that if you take this out, uh, you are going to... Uh, put that SA-2 site out of commission. And if you are attacking it from a distance um, and you um, with a harm, um, you can go ahead and punch in that 126 code and that will um, um, home in on that, that code for this radar. Okay, let's jump over now to that flat face radar or the P-19, also known as the Danube. I think I said that right. That is actually the Russian name uh, for this flat face radar. Uh, its primary role is just surveillance and target acquisition. Uh, it does have a much longer range than the Fansong of 162 miles or that 260 kilometers. It uh, can do multiple um, tracks for those targets, and it does not provide any guidance to those missiles. 
And then if you are on a seed or deed mission and uh, this SA2 site is your primary target, uh, this should be your secondary uh, as well because it does not provide guidance to those missiles. And of course, if you are going to attack it with a harm from distance, uh, go ahead and punch in that 122 code. I'm now going to jump into the RWR or the radar warning receiver signatures that you'll see on some of these NATO jets. Uh, pick the four that I primarily fly as part of DCS, which is the A-10C, uh, uh, two of the Warhog, um, and the uh, F-16, F-18, and of course the Strike Eagle as well. So um, they're all pretty similar in what you see in the RWRs. And um, so the first example here is the A-10 here, and our RWR. Uh, shows both our search radar and the SA-2 um, in the uh, cockpit here. And then, of course, for the Fansong tracking radar, you're going to see the 2 as its symbology, whereas the P-19 or the flat face is going to have that search radar or the S uh, on your RWR. Very similar to the F-16. Uh, again, you're going to see the uh, number two for the Fansong tracking radar, and then uh, the S again for that P-19. So very similar to the A-10 Warhog. Uh, the Hornet skin a little bit different. Um, I, in, in theory, I don't use the RD, RWR very much in the Hornet. It's very hard to see uh, in the two-dimensional world uh, because it's kind of below the MFD. So I often use the um, uh, the electronic warfare. Uh, page on one of the MFDs to bring up the RWR it has a lot more symbology and stuff. So this works better for me in the Hornet. Um, and you can see the symbology is a little bit different. So we have a little what, little building uh, surrounding uh, the two and a little building surrounding the S. So it's just a little bit different in Hornet uh, than you uh, than you're accustomed to in either the Hornet or sorry, either the A10 or the Viper. And of course we have the Strike Eagle here last. Um, so the Strike Eagle doesn't does have an RWR, but it is actually integrated into the Tactical Electronic Warfare Warfare System or the Twos. Uh, so you need to have the Twos page up on one of the MFDs uh, to use it as part of your uh, RD, RWR. Uh, additionally, uh, the Twos system does not um, separate the Fansong or the P19 radar. Um, they both come up with the Two symbol on your uh, twos page. So just wanted you to be aware of that. All right, so let's jump into a scenario here. We are uh, moving into our target site uh, with an SA-2. Uh, so we're trespassing, right? And we get launched on. And um, so your RWR should be chirping at you that you have a missile launch. Uh, so these are some of the steps that I take to help defeat that missile. Uh, first of all, I like to visually um, acquire uh, that uh, missile launch uh, help um, with help by um, looking for that smoke trail. You can usually see if you have clear conditions and daytime or if you're using uh, night vision goggles, you should see it pretty pretty well actually. Uh, the next thing I try to do is do something called the beam, which is where you're putting uh, that threat in either your three o'clock or your nine o'clock. And what you're essentially doing is developing a, um, a zero Doppler effect with that radar. So if you don't have a, either a, um, a positive or a negative Doppler effect um, with the radar, uh, that radar is going to be having a hard time seeing you. And since that uh, missile is being guided directly from that radar, uh, if it doesn't see you, that missile is not going to hit you. Uh, additionally, you can also use terrain. Uh, so you can put uh, either a mountain or any other kind of terrain between you and uh, the threat and um, it should break that uh, radar lock. Uh, if you are in a little bit closer, and uh, remember, um, SA-2 can be pretty deadly um, close in uh, because it does have um, a pretty long boost. Um, so if you're in close and you're in a threat and you have enough altitude, um, you can uh, execute a split S maneuver and do some very aggressive uh, defensive maneuvers um, down into those lower altitudes. Um, to help slow down that uh, missile uh, by putting it into that denser air and also uh, make it do lots of turns, right? So anytime you're doing these um, kind of maneuvers and stuff, you should be uh, using your chaff. And if you have an uh, ECM pod or the electronic countermeasures pod, um, go ahead and use that too. And you should be pretty successful. But yeah, if you're far enough out to get launched on, uh, I usually find that the beam effect uh, works best. 
So that uh, pretty much sums up um, kind of the evasion tactics I do. Let me show you them to you now. So let's jump in that F-15, Strike Eagle, and I'll give you do a quick little demonstration. All right, see you in a sec. All right, welcome to the game. So here we are sitting in the F-15E Strike Eagle on my way here to Waypoint 2 where I do have a SA-2 site. Uh, we're sitting here at 20,000 feet. Let's go ahead and engage the autopilot. Just to hold our altitude. And uh, yeah. So as you can see, we're using the 2s, which the... Um, RWR is integrated, and we already have the two up on uh, the scope here, or the RWR, or twos. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and get a little bit closer so it can launch on us. So we're outside of the uh, launch envelope uh, for the S75, uh, but we're getting pretty close here. We're at 30 miles, so 28 miles can engage us. So let's turn off the AP. And we'll use our uh, our practice, right? So uh, I did want to point out to you that uh, we are invulnerable. Uh, turn it off just for demonstration. Okay, so there we go. So uh, the SA-2, or the tracking radar now, is locking onto us. It hasn't launched on us yet, but we're going to still ingress in. Twenty thousand feet, so we're making it kind of easy for it to launch on us because we're up kind of high. All right, so we're definitely in the launch envelope, but it's going to wait for us to get a little bit. There we go. We got a missile launch. Gonna zoom in. There we go. We got uh, visually acquired the smoke smoke trail, so we got a launch. Uh, so let's go ahead and put it on on our three o'clock. So it's called the beaming. that glare is coming off us. Alright, so there's the... Put it on a beam. There we go. we got multiple launches. So i got one missile tracking me right now, and this one is not tracking anymore. So let's go ahead and pop some uh, chaff and flare. And there we go. It's, gonna, it's following that. There we go. It's moving off behind us. So we've evaded that just by beaming that sucker. Not too shabby. We got another one inbound right here. And there it goes. It's gonna go right behind us. Okay, so that was good use of the uh, the A beam or the beaming uh, procedure. Uh, what we're doing there is not giving the Doppler effect for the radar uh, any returns because. Uh, doesn't see a velocity difference between us and uh, the radar, so it doesn't know we're there. So that's how the uh, the beam works. All right, so let's go ahead and turn it in a little bit. So it's launched a couple uh, missiles on us, and let's try to demonstrate how to use the terrain here. I'll pop in behind these uh, mountains, and drop some altitude. So SA-2s are relatively easy to uh, defend against. As long as you can visually acquire them and have some situational awareness. So she's been shy. She doesn't want to re-engage us. There we go. This will launch. I'm just looking for the... There we go. We got the missile launch here. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn down. Let's see if we can use this terrain. So I'm going to pop the afterburners. Not quite the uh, split S there. <coughs> Excuse me. Now it is on my tail. And it's, it is right there to my, what is that, 7 o'clock? Okay, let's pop in down here low. So a combination pull up, pull up, pull of getting pull up, pull up. low, low altitude, low altitude, and we defeated that. Very good. All right, let's go ahead and pop back up. Low altitude, low altitude. 
And we'll try to do a little bit beaming a little bit in closer. Uh, probably won't be as effective. So remember that SA2 or that S75 has a 25 second boost. Uh, so it's going to be burning and accelerating for 25 seconds after it launches. All right, so we're getting pretty close. There we go. So we're probably going to get hit here. Uh, but like I said, I do have... Uh, I'm uh, immortal right now. I only do that for these demonstration purposes. All right, so it's not happy. It hasn't launched on us. At least in the F-15, you're gonna. It's gonna tell you say I'm up here too. Come on. So it's right over. Here. Of course, it's right behind these. Okay, we gotta launch. Looking for that smoke trail. Where are you, smoke trail? Let's see? There we go. There it is, right? Let's try to beam it real quick. We're pretty close, but it might hit us. I'm not going to hit shaft here, just for demonstration. There it is, boosting in on us. Looks like it's still tracking us. And the beam still looks good. Yeah, that one hit us. And I think there's another one in the air. Can't see it. There it is, right here. All right, let's go ahead and pump some chap. Yeah, it's too late. Yeah, that one got us. Okay, let's see if it can get another. Let's see if it can hit us again here. Let's see how chap does with a little bit closer in. All right, we're already kind of beaming right now, but let's go ahead and let it acquire us. She might be getting low on missiles, and I think they, um, I think that might have been all six. Uh, but as you can see, so the beaming works pretty well when you're kind of far out. Uh, I didn't get the distance down there, but when you're in closer, um, they're going to track you a little bit better. Hard to hold that beam. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so be a little bit more uh, defensive, I guess, when you're getting closer in. Uh, yeah, she's probably all dead. Okay, so that was a demonstration here on how to recognize and evade the SA-2 site. All right, thanks for watching. All right, you guys take care. Bye-bye.